Hello, I'm Xue Cheng Liu from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. This is joint work with Nuo Yifu and Xinming Wang. In this work, we bridge the gap between von Neumann graph entropy and structural information. First, let's briefly introduce structural complexity of graphs. Given a graph as the input, we can extract several distributions, such as the degree distribution, the community size distribution, and using these distributions, we can calculate its and their channel entropies. And we, and we call these channel entropies structural complexity of graphs. We are particularly interested in distributions related to graph spectra, such as the degree matrix, Laplace matrix, and the normalized Laplace matrix. The von Neumann graph entropy is related to the spectra of Laplace matrix. It has some connections with quantum information theory. The pure states of a quantum system corresponds to edges in a graph. Therefore, von Neumann graph entropy can be used to describe mixedness of a quantum system. It also has found some applications in graph mining, such as neural network architecture search, compression of multilayer network, network embedding, and a network comparison. The other graph entropy is related to the degree sequence. Since it encodes the information of a classic random walker, we call it one-dimensional structural information. Combined with the two-dimensional structural information, it has found some applications in community detection and community obfuscation. Now let's compare structural information with the volume graph entropy. First, let's discuss the disadvantages of von Neumann graph entropy. Since von Neumann graph entropy relies on spectral decomposition, it has a cubic time complexity and relies on global information of the graph. The, uh, and the other issue is the interpretability. What kind of structural patterns does it characterize? The Napalashians, we only the only thing we know about it is that the Napalashian spectrum is informative of the multi-scale structure, and the advantages of structural information is obvious. It uh, relies on it only relies on the degree sequence. Therefore, it has linear time complexity and uh, relies on local information from the graph. It describes the regularity of degree sequence. To understand the relationship between structural information and von Neumann graph entropy, we provide some numerical examples. From these examples, we find that numerically, these two entropies are very close. So why? Why would that happen? To understand this phenomenon, we plot the degree sequence and the spectrum of several graphs. We choose four real-world graphs and four gener generated synthetic graphs. We find that the sorted degree is more flat than the sorted spectrum. And interestingly, for graphs with a scooted degree distribution, the sorted spectrum and the sorted degree almost coincide. Now, the idea comes into our mind that the structure information might be a good approximation of the von Neumann graph entropy. At least for real world graphs with a scooted degree distribution, this approximation might be very good. But for any kind of unweighted, undirected graphs, is this approximation really good? In fact, the degree sequence and the correlation between degree and spectrum can be mathematically described using a term called majorization, which states that a doubly stochastic matrix multiplies the spectral equals to the degree sequence. It can be justified using spectral decomposition of the Laplacian spectrum Laplace matrix. If we look at the angular elements of the Laplace matrix, especially the right hand side of the equation, it's easy to find that each degree can be expressed as a convex combination of the spectrum. Using this correlation between degree and spectrum, we can bridge the gap between these two entropies. We first define the entropy gap as the structural information minus von Neumann graph entropy. And we, we can show that 
The entropy gap is larger than zero, but smaller than dog E for unweighted graphs. And the relative approximation error converges to zero at the rate of one divided by log n. We further provide four examples, the complete graph, the complete bipartite graph, the path graph, and the ring graph. We explicitly give the formula for structural information, monomer graph entropy, and entropy gap. And these results all consolidate our bounds on the approximation errors. In order to prove our bound, we introduce a set of real-valued random variables whose support is the spectrum. And we find that the entropy gap can be expressed as a sum of the Jensen gap over these random variables, finally divided by the graph volume. Now let's shift our attention to the Jensen gap on these random variables. Using existing results on the bounds of Jensen gap, we obtain an upper bound and upper bound on the Jensen gap of each random variable, which is related with the variance, variance of each random variable. Finally, let's sum over each random variable and put all the pieces together to obtain a final bound on the entropy gap for any undirected graph with positive weights. If we consider the unweighted graphs, we find that the entropy gap is smaller than log e. For the regular graphs, the entropy gap is smaller than log e divided by d. So by bridging the gap, we show that the structural information is actually a good approximation of the volume and graph entropy with uh, probable accuracy, scalability, and uh, interpretability. Inspired by this approximation, we, could, we can design more flexible and efficient algorithms for applications related to volume and graph entropy. The first application is to maximize volume and graph entropy. It's a combinatorial optimization problem and uh, has found applications in neural network architecture search, generative graph model, and more, but it suffers from two computational inefficiencies. The first one is to compute volume graph entropy, which is very really hard. The second one is the exponential number of computations. To overcome the in computational bottlenecks, we propose a practically very efficient heuristic. The first step is to replace the volume graph entropy by the structure information. The second step is to resolve the exponential number of combinations by the greedy method. The second, the third step is to reduce the optimization in each greedy step to the edge centrality problem. And uh, we notice a mono monotonic property of the edge centrality. And by using this monotonic property, we can accelerate the searching process by pruning the search space. Specifically, we first sort the load list according to long decreasing degree order. Then we use two pointers, head and tail, to squeeze the search space very quickly. The second application is to measure graph similarity. Using volume graph entropy, the quantum Jensen shuttle distance can be used to compute the graph, the graph similarity between two graphs and has found applications in multilayer network compression. But it has two drawbacks. The first one is still the computational inefficiency. The second one is about interpretability. We really don't understand why quantum Jensen shuttle distance works for multilayer network compression. To address these two issues, we propose a structural information distance. The structural information distance is easy to compute because it depends only on the degree sequence. And therefore, it is also easy to understand. Now let's compare the metric properties between these two distances. The two distances both have both non-negative non-negativity and symmetry. The quantum the quantum Jensen shuttle distance follows identity of discernibles, whereas the structure information doesn't follow. But uh, impo the important thing is that the structure information distance sat satisfies the triangle inequality, 
whereas the it is still an open problem to determine whether quantum general shannon distance has the triangle inequality. So in short words, the structural information distance is a pseudo metric. Therefore, we can use it to compute anomaly scores. We propose an incremental algorithm with a linear time complexity. Now let's evaluate our theory and propose the algorithms. We use nine real world static graphs and two real world temporal graphs. And we, we further use three random graph models. The first thing is to evaluate the universal universality of entropy gap. We find that the entropy gap is close to zero for a wide range of graphs generated from the three random models. The entropy gap is negatively correlated with the average degree. And importantly, the important thing is that the structural information is linearly correlated with the Boniman graph in entropy. Then we test the sensitivity. The entropy gap decreases as the average degree increases. Particularly in the WS model, the entropy gap decreases as the edge rewiring probability increases. And the importantly, the entropy gap is linearly insensitive to the change of drop size. Now we come to the accuracy and speed. We choose three baselines. The first two baselines are from a work published in SMR, and the third baseline is published in the web conference. We find that the, the structural information is the only one that achieves both high efficiency and high accuracy. As for the extensibility, we find that the entropy gap is sensitive to the change of edge weights in these graphs. Now we evaluate our proposed algorithms. First, we choose the two baselines to evaluate the, the effectiveness and the efficiency of our algorithm in maximizing monument graph entropy. The first baseline is to randomly add a key edges. The second baseline is to maximize the algebraic collectivity gradient. Obviously, our algorithm is the only one that achieves both high efficiency and a large increment of Boniman graph entropy. As for major similarity between graphs, we find that the structural information distance is linearly correlated with the VO score. Uh, finally, we evaluate the effectiveness of structural information in detecting those type anomalies. Of course, structural information distance is well suited for detecting those type anomalies. Now it comes to the end. We think we provide a special example to show that the spectral representation is closely related to local structural information. And we provide several future directions, uh, including sample from, from the graph and explore submodularity sub and monotonicity of graph entropy. We can further extend our work to normalize the Laplace matrix directly graphs. And though we want to make some collections with graph, with graph representation learning. That's it. Thank you for attending. I'm happy to take any questions.